Hello Heavy Woodworkers and DIYers, me Anna here with Heartwood Art and today I'm going to show you how I notch these 4x4 posts for my workbench legs using my miter saw. It's so fast and easy, I won't do it any other way. Hey, if you're enjoying these tips, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and come on over to heartwoodart.com for even more helpful tips. All right, let's dive in. I first saw this notch technique using a circular saw. If you're watching this video anywhere other than on the heartwoodart.com post, be sure to see the link above or below to jump over to the post and read why I rather do the notches with a miter saw. Now, there is no such thing as a 4x4 that's perfectly straight and without cracks running through it. Choose the best that you can from your hardware lumber supplier. I used a stop block on my miter saw station to cut each one to the same length regardless of bow or warp. And don't assume that the factory cut end of the board is square. Mine weren't, so I shaved off a quarter inch before making the cut to the final length. Then once I had the 4x4s cut to length, I stood them on end to ensure the bottom was square, and I rotated them around to find the prettiest face, as it will be on the front or back of the bench and will show. That pretty face is also where I want to cut the notches. Now you only want to cut 1.5 inches deep, which is the thickness of a 2x4. To get the correct depth, I laid my 4x4 on the floor with the pretty face down. Then I laid a 2x4 flat, next to the end, and then I simply mark the 4x4 end. Now most miter saws have a cut depth adjustment. Here's where it is on my 10 inch Makita compound sliding miter saw. You simply flip the metal piece outward and then use the screw to adjust the cut depth. Then I place the 4x4 pretty face up on the miter saw and use the line I drawn to ensure my blade depth was correct. I used a 2x4 to mark the notch width also. To keep everything level, I found it easiest to flip the leg upside down with the pretty face out. Then I placed a 2x4 next to it on the floor, standing tall, which is the way it will be mounted to this leg. Then I just drew a line with my pencil. Now it's so hard to find a 4x4 that's not warped or twisted all the way down the length of it. So lining it up for the notch cut can be a little tricky as it may not always be totally flat against the miter saw bed or rail. You'll have to watch how you're holding it so you don't rock it out of square two. I started at the end to ensure my cut depth was correct. Then I moved the 4x4 down to the end cut and cut inside that line, meaning I ensured the edge of my saw was on the outer end toward the top of the 4x4. Then I moved the 4x4 back so I could start chipping away at the end toward the center. Now for making the cuts, there are two ways you can do this. If you can pull your blade all the way toward you and have plenty of clearance between the blade tip and the 4x4, then you can leave the blade in the down position and use it sort of like a regular saw by moving it in and out of the 4x4 and scooting the 4x4 into position for the next cut. But if your blade tip touches the wood piece when fully retracted toward you, then you'll need to lift the blade, scoot the wood, and make a new plunge cut, and then cut across to the back of the wood. Now for the width of the cut, there are two ways you can do this too. You can scoot the wood the width of the saw blade and literally shave off more wood. Or you can scoot the wood in by two to three times the width of the saw blade and make less passes. But you'll need to use a hammer to break out the slivers and likely need a chisel to chip out the bottom of them so you have a flush surface. I chose to make more passes and shave off the wood. The shaving method will create a lot more sawdust and maybe a few chips. Now, if I had emptied my bag more often, I probably would not have ended up with a four inch pile of sawdust on the back of my saw, but I feel I got a far cleaner cut in the end doing it this way. Now, because I'm using a 10 inch blade, it didn't cut to the full depth on the back side of the 4x4. So I had to flip the 4x4 over and do a few more cuts. And actually, I did something that may be a little unorthodox. I did the first plunge cut next to the stop point 
on my notch. Then I lifted the blade just a little and pulled the board across it, away from the blade. And the blade literally shaved off the high spots. Then I stopped the blade and repeated, but this time with the blade fully lowered. Now I found making two passes was not at all stressful on my blade compared to trying to shave off too much height at once. Now again, this makes for a lot more sawdust because you're basically using the saw blade as a radical sander. But boy, what a nice finish it makes for the notch. Now before you go further, ensure your first notch is a good fit. I placed a 2x4 in my notch and put a square on the end to ensure it was level. Now once I got all the top notches done, I lined up all four legs and used a 2x4 to ensure the ends were square and even. Then I measured 4 inches from the bottom, which is where I want the bottom of the 2x4 rail to hit. I laid a 2x4 across the top of the legs and used a speed square to check for square on both sides. And then I just drew a line across the legs using the top and bottom of the 2x4 as a guide. Now before cutting, I double checked the distance of those lines on both of the outer legs to ensure the lines were the same and square all the way across. Measure twice, cut once, right? Now for these inside cuts, I first did the two cuts on the inside of both lines. Then I was free to do the shave scoot shave method through the interior between them. Last, I checked that a 2x4 could slip into the notch and adjust it as needed. Usually that was just the width of the saw blade or less that had to be shaved. And then I laid all four legs out and put 2x4s in both notches. I checked that the top and bottoms of the legs were still in perfect alignment. Voila! And done. It's so easy. It took me all of 30 minutes to cut my workbench legs and make the notches. However, the sawdust cleanup took me over an hour. Now my saw comes equipped with a port for a vacuum and you better believe I'll be using that next time. Your other choice, of course, is to do the cutting outside. Just know that the fine dust will go everywhere, so ensure your neighbors are okay if their cars get covered in it. That's it. I hope this makes it easy for you to create notches in your 4x4 post too. Be sure to visit heartwoodart.com for more helpful shop tips. And I'll see you in the shop.